right, let's make a wire shark video. Come on out. Intro time. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a wire shark security analyst profile. Something that can be extremely useful for you and your colleagues. All right, let's do it. So before we get started into all the changes that we can make to Wireshark, we need to have a way to organize all of the changes into an easily accessible place. And how we do that is by creating a profile. Now you may already have a profile created. We're going to go ahead and make a new one. I have done this in a previous video, but I'm going to go do it again just because it's part of the package here. So there's two ways we can go about this. We can go down to the bottom right hand of the screen and click on profile. And then you can choose the profile that you want. Right now I've got SOC Analyst selected. The other way to do that is to go to edit, click on it and go down to configuration profiles and then choose the profile that you want or you can go about and make a brand new one. And then that is the profile that you can use. So go ahead, make a new profile, and we're going to proceed with making some changes to this SOC analyst profile. The next thing that we're going to do for our SOC profile on Wireshark is something called coloring rules. And as you can see on the screen, all of the different packets that we have displayed in our Wireshark here have colors. And it can really help you with navigating and quickly seeing things in your display window here. Now how we go about changing this or adding our own is we go to view, and we go down to coloring rules and it brings up this screen here and you can make your own. You can see that all these ones down here, they are all the defaults that come with Wireshark when you install it. And I've gone ahead and actually added some of my own. So I've got a particular filter that looks for uh, packets that have the fin push and urge flags set on and then I have a couple other unique ones that are looking for IP links that are under 40 and then a UDP that is completely empty. The next thing that I'm going to show you is the filter buttons. So on the top right of my screen you can actually see some buttons that I've made that are custom. The handy thing about this is that there are sometimes there's things inside of a, a capture that you use a particular filter all the time. Okay, and so having a button allows us to quickly enter that filter so we can see the contents being filtered right live as we're in it. Now how do we go about adding them? We do it just like this. Head on over to edit and go down to preferences and go to filter buttons. Now you can see that I've got a bunch of filter buttons that I've made, but not all of them are actually selected. We can select and deselect the ones that we want. And to add it, we go to the little plus here, click it, and then fill in the details that you want and hit OK. And the button that you've just made will be available to do a quick switch over. Another thing that I like to do whenever I create a custom profile for Wireshark is actually going in and adding custom columns so that I can really quickly see the information that I like to have accessible. Things that I like to add are source ports, destination ports, and I've also found that having a host column actually really helpful as well because I can very quickly see the, the hosts that were referenced in that particular packet. Now how we go about doing that is really, really simple. So I'm going to go ahead and go down in here into our details pane, and I'm going to right click on one of the pieces of information that I would like to have as a column. So let's go and I'll right click on this and I'm going to do apply as column. And we can see that right away I've got some details, I've got check marks. Now the, the particular thing that I selected isn't actually that important to have a column dedicated to IPv4. The, the point of this particular section is that whatever you want, you can make a column of it. Now if I want to get rid of it, it's really quite simple. I right click on it and I go to remove column. And that's how you can quickly add columns to your list pane so that you can quickly see the information that you want to see. Okay, so in the previous section, I showed you that you can make buttons so you can quickly jump around to the filters that you use a lot. 
But there is a way that we can actually have even more functionality that's very similar to that, but also have a less cluttered because we don't want to have hundreds of buttons up on our on our interface here. So let's find a filter that I don't have saved and then add it as something called a bookmark. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to right click on this source port 137 and I'm going to apply it as a filter selected. And now I've I've sorted this particular capture by the UDP source port of equal to 137. Okay. Now let's say I really really like that particular filter and I want to be able to go back to it all the time. What we do here is we go to the left side and we left click and we click save filter. Okay? And now we've been given a a window that shows the filter that we just made and I could give it a name. Let's give it something logical. Something that makes sense to you. It can really literally be whatever you want. Okay. Now we're going to access that filter. So now I've I've cleared out my my filters. I've got the the original packet capture here and I'm going to access my bookmarks and I'm going to go down to the bookmark that I just made literally right here and click on it and it's going to bring up that filter. Does the exact same job bookmarks do as the buttons that we made, but we we have the option to be able to do a whole ton more.